Darren. I'm in the Pacific Rim at Oru, and uh, I want to talk a little bit today about Village Farms Tomatoes. This is a farm that, you know, have gone back and forth with the growers for, for years, with the grower, with Dirk De Jong, for, for a couple of years. So, we're going to put in, uh, especially for you guys, uh, one row, it's about 3 homer plants with a new cherry variety. Clearly, there are 65 acres, it's to a million square foot of greenhouse, they put out 60 million tomatoes in that one greenhouse alone. And we got out there and it was staggering. You look in every direction and it just, it's off to the horizon. You're in a building and it's tomatoes as far as you can see. It's a million square feet of tomatoes. Everything about it, everything about it is impressive. It's, it's the way they handle them. It's, it's the concern for the environment. I mean, there, there's no soil. They're all grown in coconut husk. Uh, the water is completely recaptured and, and refined and cleaned and reused. To see that kind of care and energy, just in the general environment on the tomato gives you a good idea where they're at and how much they care and then the tomatoes themselves you hear Dirk or any of the guys in the warehouse talk about uh, tomatoes and, and there's a passion there and you'd think someone that deals with them day in day out would be tired of them I mean I could I, I shuck oysters for two years I'm never gonna want to eat an oyster again but there's a lot to be said for having such a close relationship to the guy who cares and that's kind of our philosophy on the food all along is that when we find someone who cares that much about the food at their level it helps us do our job at our, at our level, obviously. Look at this tomato on the right. You can see all the tiny little hairs on the product. And you look at this product, you almost can't see it. So the difference is people in Europe and say, what do you guys grow? Uh, what is the taste? What is the bricks level? And according to that, we make up our mind and say, hey, we put in a small trial, you know, to see how it's going. but." If the consumer doesn't want it, well then we don't want to grow it. We want to bring out the best tasting tomato there is. One of the things we walked away with that made an impression on us was the aromas. You know, the, you smelled the freshness. You smelled the ripe tomatoes. You smelled the green vine. We've been playing with a, a process that I thought was pretty cool. And we were using what's essentially a coffee siphon. And, uh, we're using a lot of the aromatics, some of the, some of the stems from the tomatoes, some really frail aromatics like thyme and the flowers from oregano. We've hollowed out a Campari tomato and we've filled it with a granitase. We've just frozen the guts. We, we empty out the tomato, we freeze that with a touch of sugar but not much, and then we restuff these tomatoes with that frozen, chunky granite, big shards of tomato. And to highlight that or to contrast that, I suppose, we've almost brewed tea with the green stems and the thyme and the oregano. So it'll pull that tomato water up into the aromatics. It'll, it'll give it a quick burst in about 30 seconds at most of, of, uh, of steeping and then drains it back down under vacuum again. So it's really extracting a lot. And then we pour that, that hot tomato water around this frozen tomato and frozen granite. And, and what you get on the nose right away is just green. When we see how much care and attention Dirk and his team are putting in the tomatoes at their end, there's a serious obligation on our end to, uh, to make sure we carry it on and, and do something great with them.